So in the last video, we identified that one of the big things that we're looking to do is find these terminal states that sort of end our game in an adversarial search. And specifically, what we can do is assign these states a value. This first one we were looking at, oh, well, if my player, my agent, was playing as the X in tic-tac-toe, you know, it could see that this is a terminal state, and it's a bad one. Again, our node, instead of it being max, that's a terrible color for it right there. <laughs> instead of thinking about it as max, X loses. X draws. X wins. So again, we can assign some type of value to these individual states. This is a bad one. Uh, you can see the next one, it's not as bad. You know, we, I used to call this a cat uh, when I was a child. Uh, it's an okay move. You know, it's not the best one, but it's better than bad. And then we can see, oh, well, if I'm at a state where X is winning, that's a good move. And specifically, you can see we can assign some type of value to those given states. Bad moves could be a negative value. Draws could be some zero. And then positive or wins and goods can be positive. Now, one thing to kind of just throw out there, they don't have to be that it's not set in stone there may not be a draw or uh you know draws are just a little hard to get uh you know this could still be a three this could be a five and this could be a ten right those values can change and it depends on your game or just how you're sort of building out your evaluations of or, or your utility functions for your minimax search ah i i i just gave you a little hint there Essentially, what we're doing is something called a minimax search, which in itself is really just a depth first search. I'm thinking about sort of my move and then what state happens from that. And then I want to plan out sort of there we are. I want to plan out their move because. I'm looking at this in the sense, again, this is an adversary. They have my worst uh, intentions uh, in mind. They want me to lose. So this is me planning out their potential moves from different outcomes, right? Their move, or men's move, when I think about what they may be doing, they probably want to pick a move that's much worse than one that's going to make me win. And so... The idea here is that when we get to sort of leaf nodes, you know, A, they can be happening anywhere in the search. That's one of the reasons we're kind of making depth first uh, approaches. But what we need to do is we need to get those values at those terminal states back up to the root node because that's going to allow me to decide whether or not I take this move or some other move that might also be you know, that might be the better move. So how do we do this? Well, the way I like to think about it is to start building out that recursive function. And it's going to be uh, hideous, but you can think about this first condition as sort of our base case, right? I'm at some terminal node. I have reached sort of a state where, let me just draw one of these out. So I have reached a state where I've won, max is one. Well, again, what's the utility at this given state? And I use the example that, oh, in this state, it's a plus one. Well, awesome, because what I would be doing in a recursive sort of case is I would return that value. But as you can see, one of the things that we also have is sort of our recursive cases. We need to alternate between act or th you know thinking about what men would do, what uh, what we what our move would be, and what their move would be back and forth, and that's sort of the the thing you might notice about this notion of highest and lowest value. Specifically, again, what we're looking at to kind of throw a little bit more of the pseudocode into this is we're essentially doing some big old function 
mini max on some state s and you can see again uh we're just dealing with if that base case we're at a terminal state awesome return the value but notice again we're dealing with sort of these ideas of when this is at a max node or a min node we're not at a terminal state notice again I'm thinking about it in that sense that, oh, I need to make a recursive call. I need to look at what the actions are, or what all the possible actions are for a given state. What's the result going to be? And based on those, again, this notion of, I want to select the largest of them. Well, or sorry, I want to select the largest of them. That's, again, only for our move. When we're at min, we're at a min node, that's their move, and they want to think about the smallest possible outcomes. And that's just what the next slides are going to say is, again, you know, when the state is controlled by max, max wants to pick the maximum value. When the state is controlled by min, they want to pick the minimum value. But more to my point is to take this and, you know, I hate doing these types of little you know one-liners of code just because it's still a little too confusing let's start to expand it out a little bit and i immediately show you a one line of code but work with me here again this is sort of just sort of the the big you know mini max search it starts the entire process uh, of again starting with max and then specifically, you notice that we start jumping back and forth between min and max values because I'm thinking, again, as max of the outcomes of two possible states in this case that were occurring, occurring from min's decision. And so again, I'm jumping down to the min value function same thing if that was a terminal state right it's not really now min's turn it's that the game is over so return out the value the utility at that given state but one thing you might might notice is that there is some uh, positive infinity going on here because as i start to look at these potential moves right a positive infinity is i want to find something smaller than that i want to find a state that is smaller than that and if I found something that was a one, well, guess what? V is now negative one because I found a number that was lower. Technically speaking, good moves or, or moves that end up winning max the game uh, at least are part of that consideration. Again, it's because uh, as I iterate through all the possible outcomes, right? Negative or sorry, positive infinity. Well, that's still quite large. That's uh, it. Max, min is thinking that max is going to win, so I'm trying to pick smaller values to ensure that that may not happen. And so, in this case, well, one is smaller. One is smaller uh, than positive infinity so that switch happens then when we get into that situation of something like uh, one versus negative one well we see that one is bigger and so that negative one would prevail but notice again we're still doing that same iteration going through all the possible actions and then we're doing a recursive call we're jumping now up uh, to a max node we're going to take this notion of, well, what are the actions at my move, min's move? And then, well, I got to now make the plans for Max's move, just to draw them out as haphazardly as I can. And then the same song and dance is going on. Max does the same thing. It's going with min's. Instead of a positive, it works off of a negative infinity. Instead of it going for the smallest number, it's going for the larger numbers. And instead of calling for max value, it jumps to min value because that same thing is going on as we keep on traversing deeper and deeper down our tree assuming this is min's turn and so just to kind of visualize that a little prettier uh you can see again we're looking at it from max's perspective of a negative infinity and better moves uh are going to be larger than negative infinity so we want to take those 
and versus uh, on the min side, we're working off of a positive infinity and we want to pick moves that are making that number, that, that possible max will always win move, smaller along the way. And we're just alternating between the two of these until we reach these terminal states. So the way you can think about this is, in essence, what the Minimax is doing is thinking about, let me just pick out the worst possible case scenarios for Max. So I like to sort of present this uh, uh, initial example to the students. And we're not at alpha beta pruning quite yet. We're going to have to do an exhaustive search. That's sort of a hint a little bit later. But you can see one of the things that I, I've done is I, I sort of added these little triangles here to indicate whose turn it is. At a max turn, uh, you know, I want the larger of the two. So the number's pointing upward. But again, I think about that as some action occurred that Max did that leads to Min's turn. And notice that the triangles are going pointing downward now to kind of give that mnemonic, oh, hey, I want to pick the smaller of the two. Well, Min has some action. And then it's Max's turn. And then Max makes their turn. Now, in our case, we... You know, if we're following the pseudocode, oh, we're at a terminal state. So that terminal state is going to get passed up two, because two is better than negative infinity. But again, we're just traversing through all the moves, and that's why I put it sort of at this little corner here, because I go down and I see another terminal state. That terminal state retur returns its utility, and we see that that two is much smaller than a nine, and so that nine happens. Then that same thing, we're again doing recursion. Since I've traversed all possible moves that Max could have made, now I'm returning the value that this would sort of result in, and we're dealing with min. Now again, min is looking at it from this positive infinity perspective, and guess what? Nine is better than positive infinity, so it's considering it. But that's not all. We have to then traverse downward. And you can see what we're going to end up with, especially in this case. Again, we're at a max node, so we pick the 7. I'm going to draw it larger because you can already see that as we move through this, that 4 is not better than 7. We take that and we move it upward. Oh, well, Min sees that 7. Seven's much lower than 9. And so... That nine's no longer a possible move. Min would pick the seven between the two of them. And as you can imagine, it gets passed up there as well. I'll leave it there for now, but one of the things that sort of I cheat with with uh, our exhaustive Minimax traditional search is, again, since I know that these are going to be max nodes, max will always pick the, the larger of its two, so nine, uh, and then five. Min is going to look at the two of these. <clears throat> pick the smaller of the two and then again we're at a max node so uh here oh well max between seven and five just to get rid of that max would clearly pick the move that would lead to this seven value and so we can see that this is the if everyone played optimally this would be the pathway that we would end up taking. And this is just some uh, confirmation of what we see going on here. So again, Max's turns are looking for the bigger numbers. This is me just noting that you may end up in situations like this. Specifically, this is if you're working off of some type of iterative deepening search. Because there are too many possible moves if you're thinking beyond tic-tac-toe into things like chess or checkers or... I'm trying to think of another one, uh, Connect Four, right? You may want to stop at some point and do evaluations at non-terminal nodes. That's you know your own little uh, fruition. But again, as we work through this, we can see again the nine and the seven are being picked by Max and those potentials. Uh, same thing, seven and five are being picked by Min in their sort of respective spots, and then Max would pick uh, the seven, resulting in this pathway along that way. So one of the things I'll say is go ahead, pause the video for a second and you know, try and work through this for a second. Now that you're back, if you hopefully pause, again, if I'm working through this, uh, one of the things that I'm typically doing with my students is 
for this version, we'll talk about limitations in a second and get into alpha beta pruning in an, the next video. Uh, again, I like to tell my students, start by establishing whose turn it is along the way. Again, for at least my sake, I always want to make the assumption that Max is going first. Uh, again, uh, the notion is this is an our move versus their move. We only want to make decisions on our turn, so our turn is always focusing on maximizing our effects. Even if you're trying to get the smaller of the value, you know, that's where you got to do funky math, and instead uh, this becomes one-fifth versus one-sixth, but I'm digressing, so let me boop. So again, this is Max's turn, this is Min's turn, this is Max's turn. All right, well, again, not a terrible problem. Uh, we're just looking at the larger of the two of these, so this would become six. Uh, the larger of the two of these would become seven, and since we're dealing with, I'll, I'll just keep on doing the Max's for right now. Largest of this one would be eight, Largest of this one would be seven. Now we move up to the min's level. So the smaller of those two would result in a six. The smaller of these two would result in the seven. And then when we get to max, we're again looking at the larger of those two. Seven. So this is where I'll leave you is obviously I've said it a few times and in the next video again, we'll take an uh, exploration on how we can resolve this. But one of the problems is it is exhaustive. And because it is, uh, is exhaustive, it can get exponentially harder as the game progresses. When we're dealing with something like tic-tac-toe, right, there's only possibly nine moves that could be had here. So it's actually relatively small. But when we're dealing with something like a full-on uh, chessboard, and I'm not going to attempt to draw a full-on chessboard, but just to give you sort of the, the notion here, right? Look at all the possible grids that can be going on here. And do I move this piece or 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 this piece? Or you get my point. Again, uh, here's where, you know, it's super hard. And sure, it's still going to find you the solution, right? But the big issue is it's going to take potentially 10 years or 100 years or a millennia uh, to find out your win. Actually, not even your win. Whether or not you do literally that move first, so again, this is a limitation to at least the initial Minimax approach. And so how do you sort of evaluate this? Well, one approach is that you can do iterative deepening searches. So I only allow for a depth limit of planning ahead, I don't know, four moves. Four, you know, that's not great or bad either. It's just, I'm only going to plan four moves ahead. Then instead of thinking about terminal states, I have to make evaluations on non-terminal states. How good does this state, you know, present me in? How good is this? And, you know, you have to kind of do some funky evaluations for that, but have fun with that. And now, finally, what we'll talk about in the next video, oh, what if we use some magical trick called pruning to eliminate parts of the tree? Because that would help us sort of reduce this exponential exhaustive search. So in the next video, we'll talk about alpha, beta, minimax pruning.